So Savannah Hernandez released a video called Woke Students Can't Explain White Privilege. Big shocker. We're going to be unpacking a handful of scenes in that video today. But before we do, you guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is sponsored. I actually have another new sponsor on the channel, Native Path. I will be talking about them more in just a bit. But for right now, let's jump into the video. Saying like we're tired of straight white men in society is really as like explicit as it sounds. I think it's just contributing to a general idea that like we're tired of straight white men having they're they're tired of straight white men replace the white with any other ethnicity if it sounds racist it's probably because it is being the power and everything you know and it's like we as women of color as like students at this university like we are very much capable of certain things and we don't have the same privileges that are offered to straight white men <laughs> Uh, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that lady, that young lady looks like she's Indian American. Indian Americans perform better than white Americans in literally every way in the United States. Many, many CEOs of Fortune 500 companies are Indian Americans. They're incredibly successful people. So, I don't know what you're saying here, lady. And I've been hearing that from a lot of the ladies that I've been talking to today. Talk to me about what some of those privileges are that, you know, straight white men have that you don't have. Talk to me about that. Um, I think, I mean, I don't really know. Have you ever experienced, like, a specific oh, no. instance? I don't know, but I also need to go. I know, I, sorry, I, I do really need sorry. to go. I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the slow zoom in on the, on the face. Um, I... I don't know the answer to this, but guess what? I gotta go. Maybe you do gotta go, but what a convenient time that you have to leave on. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, uh, that, that couldn't have been more perfect. The, the, the zooming on the face is always, is always perfect. Let's see if the next group of students can do a little bit better. Talk to me about some of those privileges that white people have that you guys don't have. Um, I would just be like, Okay, uh, I guess I'll start with I am a black queer person. Uh, if I were to just walk amongst the streets, I'm also like women, like ident or I look very feminine. If I were to walk across the streets in the dark as a black queer female presenter. I don't know if you, you see this person and think you're like gay or queer. I, I don't, the, it's not like something that stands out to me, I would say person I would not feel safe uh, because I feel like I'd be pretty targeted but if I were a white cis man I don't think I'd be like the type of person someone would come up to and hate crime because that's just not what happens okay hold on hold on hold on <laughs> the, the uh, uh, Jesse Smollett popping up on the screen so she's saying because she's a woman and she's a person of color, that she would be more worried about a hate crime on the street versus if she was just like a straight white dude. Um, one, I just gotta say, I mean, this is really sad how these people view themselves, how they view the world and all of that. But also, you know, if, if we are talking about like attacks, when it comes to violent attacks on people, the overwhelming majority are intra-racial, meaning white on white, black on black, right? Um, however, if we were to look at interracial attacks, violent attacks on other people, you, you have a much greater chance of being attacked as a white person by a black person than a black person by a white person. Those are just pretty basic statistics, right? And again, I will repeat, the overwhelming majority of violent attacks on people are intra-racial. A big problem that we're seeing here is a lot of these students aren't being educated with the correct information. They're not being given the facts. She probably is genuinely afraid to walk on the streets. And and let's let's put the jokes aside. That's incredibly sad that she's being misled, that she's being brainwashed to believe that that's the reality of the situation when in fact the data and just reality doesn't necessarily reflect that worldview. I'm certainly cognizant of my own privilege because of my my own race, this is the color of my skin. Oh my gosh. Um, what privileges are those? Lots of things, I mean, like. This guy has the mentality that because he's white, he gets more of a reward th for, for his work, his labor, his whatever, than his peers that may be a different skin color than him. 
So already you think you're better than people. All right, everyone, let's take a few moments to talk about today's sponsor. It is summertime and you've probably started hitting the gym or hopefully you're hitting the gym like your boy here, not trying to brag. And if you're like most people, you've also probably started to notice some joint pain or bone on bone pain. The reason for this isn't just your age, it's actually linked to reduced collagen in your body. You see, by your 30s, natural collagen levels start to decrease by about 1.5% each year. That's why supplementing with collagen protein is the most important thing you can do to maintain strong joints and bones. It's proven to accelerate tissue recovery, minimize wrinkles, enhance hair follicle thickness, and promote joint strength and pain-free motion, which again is crucial if you're being active. Who wouldn't want more collagen when it does all this? And here's the good news, you guys. Right now when you go to stopboneonbone.com slash klug, you can stock up on native path collagen at up to 55% off. I will put links down in the description below. Make sure you take advantage of this let's get back to the video i think there are certain assumptions that come with so certain people like they when they look at a black person or an indian person they, they automatically have this profile in their head you know racial profiling and that still exists i mean uh, he's i mean to a certain extent that's absolutely correct a lot of people do profile people a lot of people profile how you're dressed if you are walking on the street and you are a black man wearing a very nice outfit, and you're next to a white man wearing, you know, a hoodie, looking super sketchy, almost like a John Fetterman walking down the street, who are you going to be more intimidated by, right? Um, so there's a lot of factors there, but the overwhelming majority of people aren't just discriminating and, and, and uh, judging people just based on their skin color. How you dress is a major, major part in, in how people feel uh, when they're near you. I hear more of the opposite on college campuses and talking to people that are more comfortable with being more openly judgmental and more racist towards people that look like this guy, just a white guy. I mean, the video just literally started with a lady saying she's tired of straight white men. <laughs> Guys like this really need somebody to tell them that Indian Americans make more money on average than white people, Nigerian Americans, Asian Americans, and it, it just completely blows up the narrative that they're trying to push, that they have privilege because of the color of their skin. Guess what, man? Quit making excuses for you, your friends, whoever. Go work hard, make good decisions, and it'll work out really well for you in the end. All right, let's move on from the uh, self-hating white guy. Talk to me about some of the privileges that m white men are awarded that you guys are not awarded. Um, definitely, like, I guess just getting away with situations. Like, if I were to like... We'll let her finish, but I hear this response all the time because you can basically just bring it to personal experience and say this one time somebody got, or I got in trouble for something that this person didn't. And that's literally the only argument that you need in order to back up your argument that, you know, people with white skin are privileged. I don't know, like, I guess... There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Uh, it's it's sad how comfortable they are just saying, oh, absolutely, white privilege exists. Okay, well, what would be an example of that? Well, most people can't really come up with something right away because it almost seems as though there's a massive month celebrating, you know, gay people and a month celebrating black people and every single Fortune 500 corporation is celebrating people of color and all of this and, how often do you see even on YouTube, they're highlighting like, uh, oh, white creators. Uh, I think it's weird for doing that for anybody, but I would also find that weird if they did it for white people. I don't care about your skin color. Do you make good content? Sorry to get off topic there, but th that, that's annoying to me. A lot of these people can't even think of these examples. They're just comfortable with saying yes. Of course it exists. Everybody around me says it does, and therefore I'm just going to go along with that. It's situations like if I had a problem with like a male teacher and they were a white cis male, there was less of a chance for something to happen to them because of it. Like I could literally report them for anything, but because of that, if they were like upstanding in the community, sucks to me be, basically. Do you think that it would be the same reaction if it was like a black male teacher? No. No. I think that That's just how she feels upstanding in the community i mean yeah if you're complaining about something that's upstanding in the community regardless of skin color it's probably not going to stick as much as it would if a teacher was having a bunch of problems but okay hey 
That's your view. So you mentioned um, straight white men having more privileges. Can you talk to me about what some of those privileges are? Uh-oh. Um, yeah, so generally, um, you know, there's not really ever a sense of, like, discrepancy whenever um, someone is trying to, let's say, for instance, there is... Um, there is uh, uh, the slow zooming sap you're killing us <laughs> a man who commits a crime and he's you know a regular looking white guy police are you know generally more likely to not have adverse reactions to them say if they're like having any sudden movements or sharp movements they'll generally be more lenient with them compared to if it was like a black or brown person uh, context would matter Right, context matters in this scene. What what are the police being called for? Is it a domestic abuse situation? Is it a you know violent crime? Is somebody just being pulled over for whatever reason? Is the person acting sketchy? Are they not acting sketchy? There's countless factors here that a lot of people just completely ignore. Where do you get that analysis from? Um, like statistics, crime statistics. Uh rates of arrest compared to uh, uh, comparing, uh, you know, white people to like black and brown people or minorities in general. <laughs> Crime statistics is not going to help him prove that argument so much. Um, you would have to kind of more of look into like Los Angeles or other major cities have implemented major um, note taking for lack of a better term, because I'm not a law enforcement officer, but basically what they have to do is they have to document the entire experience when it comes to a, an arrest being made. So you can kind of look into that. They get audited. They get, you know, people looking through that stuff all day long to make sure that there's no actual discrimination taking place. And a lot of these police departments usually do quite well, generally speaking. Um... What would you say to people who say, like, the black community commits the majority of the crime, that's why they're more likely to be arrested? What would you say to that point? Savannah always asking fantastic questions and then asking them delicately as well so that people don't have their guard up. They're actually willing to try their best to answer the questions. And that's, when it comes to videos like this, that's incredibly, incredibly important. Because if you're too aggressive right off the bat, they're not going to open up and actually be honest with you. They'll kind of, maybe they'll tell you a little bit more of what you want to hear if you're being a little bit more aggressive. At, generally speaking with my videos, I um, will start a little bit softer and then start pushing back a little bit harder as the conversation goes on. So good question, Savannah. Uh, I would say that there are uh, certain factors of society that have contributed to black and brown people being more impoverished and crime is uh, sort of the way that um, a lot of people see an escape from this poverty, you know, stealing is a crime, but say you're a hungry man and you go into a grocery store and you steal some food for you or your family, is that really a crime or are you just trying to survive at that point? All right, this is just an absolute BS argument. He's making the most emotional argument possible to excuse other crimes and violent crimes, right? Stealing bread. First of all, we don't even really have that level of poverty in the United States. And if you are experiencing that level of poverty, there's food stamps and other resources to help you out. This is a total BS argument, just trying to deflect from the conversation of talking about crime statistics. When it comes to what we're seeing actually in the black community is a disproportionate representation in violent crime. It's about three times the size of their population when it comes to the percentage that they make up for in the total violent crime in the country. Now that's not just the entire black community, of course. It's actually primarily men and it's primarily men in very specific communities that are um, boosting those numbers up a lot of times when I see people bringing up this point they it's it's a half truth because yes you can have more crime in communities that are more poor but when it comes to the insane numbers that we're seeing from a very small percentage of the black community resulting in over 50 percent of the country's total murders there's something else going on there. There's there, You can blame culture within, uh, you know, commu certain communities and inner city communities that are causing a lot of these violent crimes, the murders, all that stuff, personal decision making, and all of that. Because there are other communities within the United States that are poor as well that don't see anywhere near 
these crazy numbers that these inner city communities are seeing. Not to say that socioeconomic status has nothing to do with more crime, more murders, but to blame all of that crime, all of those murders on just socioeconomic status alone and ignoring cultural issues when it comes to glorifying gang violence is just being dishonest. Let me know what you guys thought about this video from Savannah Hernandez down in the comment section below. As always, I will post a link to her social media and all of that stuff down below. If you guys enjoyed my commentary, please make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe for more videos and hit that bell notification button so you're notified next time I post. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.